Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Joy. I am an engineer from Missing Labs on the cryptography team. Uh, and I'm here today to share about a new product uh, that my team has been building. Uh, and this is our first time to really share about the technical details uh, and since we launched two weeks ago. So first, I, if you guys were here yesterday at the developer stage during Sam's talk, he made a comparison between the dApps and apps. Uh, and for a lot of the Web3 native uh, people like you here are really familiar with how you would um, connect, uh, open up a front-end website, connect your wallet, and authorize transactions that essentially triggers action on a smart contract. Uh, smart contracts are great, especially with a very rich language like Move, um, but there are also a lot of things that you cannot do with a smart contract. Um, first of all, there is a lack of trust in off-chain data and computation in general. Uh, for example, if I were to imp implement a uh, prediction market today, and I like to say, by the end of my presentation, Bitcoin will hit 100K, and I to pl place my bet on chain, um, and I, at that point, I kind of have no choice but to trust that there will be someone in the future settles my bet on chain using the fair market price of Bitcoin. And if they posted the price of Ethereum, for example, to settle my bad, uh, bet, I'll be really upset and I will have no way of finding out what's the source of truth. Um, and in addition, uh, in on-chain contract, we know that Sweet Move is uh, relatively fast and cheap um, like blockchain compared to a lot of the other layer ones out there. But there are still applications where uh, speed and uh, cost really matters. Uh, for example, trading engines, a lot of them are written in much more performant uh, languages and you can't possibly ask all of them to be put on chain. And lastly, I think probably, the, I, in my opinion, the most challenging problem is that it, for a public blockchain like Sui, there, it's essentially impossible to work with any sort of private computation. And everything you execute in the Move VM are essentially public to everyone. Uh, for example, if I were to want to implement an uh, AI agent that fetches Twitter uh, uh, tweets uh, uh, in a, inside a smart contract, uh, there essentially impossible to implement such application inside a smart contract. One, because uh, we cannot fetch from a Twitter API from within a smart contract. And second of all, I can't possibly upload my Twitter API key into a smart contract. So assuming that these are the computations that has to stay off chain for these uh, reasons, then uh, the question now comes down to, can we still use these off chain computation result on chain? Uh, and most importantly, can we use that in a verifiable way? And we can sort of um, hope that it has as good of a, a benefits and guarantees as good as a, you would have implemented in a smart contract. Um, there are many um, fancy cryptographic primitives that kind of addresses a problem earlier. Uh, George from Atoma also mentioned, like such as ZK, uh, zero knowledge proofs, multi-party computation, fully homomorphic encryption. These are um, all these techniques that has its own trade-offs when you want to solve some of the challenges, uh, but not all of them. Um, and so Nautilus is our answer to solve a lot of these capacity um, or things you cannot do on a smart contract in our own way. Um, we actually leverage this not so new technology called trusted execution environment, or you, people call it TEE, uh, and some other people call it Enclave, um, just to make things a little more confusing. Um, and so Nautilus is essentially what we build to kind of connect this on-chain, uh, off-chain applications uh, that are built with uh, privacy and integrity, and then eventually being able to use these data in a smart contract in a verifiable way. So I want to take a quick, uh, intro, uh, quick uh, give you guys a crash course on how TE work. Uh, a trusted execution environment is essentially a secure uh, part of a machine where you can run very secure um, computations. And it comes with two very important properties. One is confidentiality and the other one is integrity. Uh, what I mean by confidentiality is that you can actually generate um, 
private key inside the enclave. Uh, and you will have the hardware guarantee that no one else can have access to such private key, um, even even for system programs that has um, privileged uh, pri pri privileges. Um, and in that case, you can imagine there are very powerful things that the T uh, Enclave can do is that you can encrypt certain sensitive data to the uh, to the Enclave, and only the Enclave who owns who has the only ownership of such private key can decrypt such information and then returns your result. And the second property uh, is another very important one is that uh, TE's uh, computation results are verifiable. Uh, what that means is uh, when you ask a TE to process a, data, uh, process a piece of data, you will essentially get a response uh, that is called a testation document. And what it does is that you can actually verify it uh, publicly that the code running inside the enclave is uh, authentic. So you can think of it as, uh, and this is a very powerful feature because uh, these, this attestation file is, can be verified by anyone, uh, any client that is outside the enclave. And um, so Nautilus, so how does TE relates to Nautilus as a product? Um, so uh, for for uh, for a Nautilus uh, application, it essentially comes with two parts, two components. And as I mentioned earlier, for this verifiability of uh, a testation document, we actually implement that as a native uh, sweep move function. So um, on one side, for anyone who wants to uh, run a TE server in a self-managed environment. Um, you can run that code inside such environment. And on the other half, uh, you can actually write a decentralized application in, in smart contract that can verify such a testation file and then as part of your smart contract. The way I think about this is you can essentially write a DAP, but then you outsource some computation outside the enclave, uh, I mean, outside the smart contract, and then you can still bring back such computation on chain in a verifiable way. So, um, and uh, currently we actually support uh, the AWS Nitro Enclaves, and it is one kind of the TE providers out there that is cloud-based. Uh, and currently uh, we, we have uh, long-term plans to support other Enclave providers. Uh, and the trust assumption here is you can basically trust that as long as AWS is not compromised, uh, you can trust that the attestation file is, uh, can be verified and the enclave running inside the environment is secure and, um, and in isolated place. So now let me uh, go into a little detail on how Nautilus work uh, from a developer perspective. Uh, let's say I am an admin and I like to deploy a server inside an enclave. Uh, so the first thing I do is to publish the code um, on somewhere uh, the, uh, public, and then now that I've been able to, I'm able to build such application inside the Enclave. I can run it inside an AWS environment uh, instance, and uh, there are a couple measurements uh, as a result that comes out of it. Is that you can have these PCRs? They're called platform configuration registers. They're essentially unique values that identifies this Enclave. And they're immutable, um, as in if you change the code, these PCR values will eventually change. Uh, and you cannot verify the testation files uh, in the future. So in some way, um, by pinning these measurements um, on chain uh, in this enclave registry, you essentially uh, reg uh, hard coded these value measurements and public keys that can be eventually used to verify any data. So from a user perspective, um, I can optionally look at the code you published uh, as a developer and then check that if they actually build to the same uh, measurements that you claim to build uh, that is pinned on chain. And the rest is really simple, um, just similarly to how a user will interact with any um, traditional applications, the first thing you do is to talk to this AWS uh, Enclave instance to process your data. So for example, I can say um, I want my app, let's say my application is uh, fetching Bitcoin price from the Enclave, uh, from Coinbase.com every minute, and they will provide such 
uh, computation inside the enclave. So as a user, I can, now that I verified that the code running inside the enclave is indeed doing what it's saying that it does, um, I can interact with it and fetch the value. And, um, and at that point, you not only have uh, the data itself, as in the Bitcoin price today, for example, you also have this si uh, signature. You can consider it as a proof because now that uh, the data itself is signed by a private key that is only existence in the enclave that the developer claimed to deploy to. And now that the, as a user you have such data, you now can interact with your uh, smart contract by just invoking this move native function that we added to Swim Move by checking that um, the signature and the data is consistent with the enclave that was registered earlier with a testation uh, file. And you know you can derive such trust because uh, you're convinced that the data is, uh, the application, the code is not modified and it's only fetching the Bitcoin price of today and nothing else. So there are many use cases. Um, like you can see that Nautilus is this really powerful extension on smart contract. And there are many use cases that really unlocks. Um, the, the way I see it, it comes into two uh, rough categories. One is on integrity, where you need integrities on data for your decentralized application. On the other hand, uh, uh, the, uh, the use cases are focusing on privacy-focused uh, applications, such as confidential computation. Um, so the first use case on trusted oracles, um, it's very easy to understand. Um, you go to a Web2 service, and you fetch certain uh, Oracle data, such as weather, asset prices, or any outcome of sports events. And you can deploy such application inside an enclave. And the result itself can be trusted uh, with integrity when you bring that data on chain. And second of all, you can also build AI agents um, that are running inside an enclave with this verifiability. So for example, you if someone says, oh, I have an AI agent that is running certain AI models, you can actually verify that result that is indeed coming from that, um, that AI model. And thirdly, for confidential computation, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you, uh, the, uh, there is a, a private key that is only accessible inside the enclave. So imagine you can now encrypt sensitive data, for example, my KYC information to Enclave and does certain computation. And the Enclave, let's say, can run some fraud detection model by telling me if I'm a human or not. And then by having the result of saying, uh, am I a human or not, uh, this yes or no answer, it also comes with this proof that um, this data is indeed processed by this Enclave. And a little hint here, if you were here yesterday for the talk on SEAL, um, there is ways you can combine Nautilus and SEAL by only giving uh, Enclave access to certain SEAL-managed uh, private key. So you can see that it actually unlocks a lot of uh, privacy-related use cases uh, that can really enrich the smart contract and a lot of institutional use cases. So how can you build with Nautilus today? Um, we uh, open sourced the Nautilus template uh, two weeks ago, um, and there are three very simple steps. Uh, the first step is you come up with your own off-chain application uh, that can be run inside Enclave, um, and we actually provide a template for you to do that inside a uh, AWS Nitro Enclave, uh, Enclave environment very easily uh, with um, a majority of the scaffolding. And secondly, uh, as an application, uh, as a DAP developer, you can register the uh, server uh, measurements and public key on chain. So they can live in a, inside an object where anyone can look at your off chain code and verify that it is the code that you're running. Um, and uh, and the thirdly, you just write your uh, decentralized application and then use the data on chain. And we're looking forward to see what you can build with Nautilus. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, uh, feel free to jump in the Nautilus uh, channel inside the Discord. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh -huh.